Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Happy Even After podcast. So I am here today to talk about breaking up. Paige Wilhide is a breakup coach and founder of Break Up Breakthrough. After experiencing a particularly devastating breakup that left her feeling like she had failed at yet another relationship, Paige knew something needed to change. So she set out on a journey to fall in love with herself, and that's exactly what she did. She spent a year saying yes to her desires, shattering unhealthy patterns, and recreating her life on her terms. Now she's on a mission to help people look at their breakups, not as failures, but as opportunities for growth. I love that so much. She's committed to helping open-hearted people turn heartbreaking experiences into breakthroughs so they can feel confident and empowered to create the future of their dreams. Hey girl, welcome. Hi. Oh, I am so, so glad to be here. It feels like a long time coming. <laughs> I know. And we've like, we've chatted a couple times. We did a live together. So this is like just a continuation of the conversation that we have started over the months. Absolutely. And I love how we like flow together and how, how passionate we are about yeah. the same topics. So it's just so lovely being in your presence. Ah, all right. So let's jump in then. Breaking up, like breaking up is hard to do like every song ever written is about breaking <laughs> up. So how is there hope after heartbreak? A hundred percent. There's more than hope. There's, there is a, there is a more empowered, better, powerful, uh, more turned on version of yourself on the other side of heartbreak. And it takes going through that tunnel, as I like to refer to it, the tunnel, the breakup tunnel, um, and being in the pain and being with the grief and the sadness and the anger and all of that to really get to the other side and create power from your breakup. So what is the breakup tunnel? Because you talk about this uh, on social media, you have like a really funny post or reel about this. Um, and can you just explain a little bit what that drive through the tunnel looks like? Yeah, well, you know, it's different for everybody. And I've sort of, I created it based on my experiences and experiences that I, that clients have, have had. So it's, um, it's a framework and I encourage people to take the framework and try it on for themselves and take what, like, just leave what fits and then, or um, hold on to what fits and then leave the rest. So um, there's like five steps to the breakup tunnel as I see it. The first step is feeling your feelings. You can't go anywhere. You cannot move forward. You cannot heal if you don't allow yourself to feel. And that means like really letting those layers of grief just move through you. You know, so often we're like, I just want to be over the sadness. I just want to be happy again. Right. And, and not, not fully honoring what our body wants us wants us to know and where our body wants us to be in those moments. So feel your feelings is number one and like really getting present and conscious and embracing your feelings. And I'll say like, just because this is the first step in the breakup tunnel, it doesn't mean that once you feel your feelings, you're done with it. Like the feelings will keep coming and it'll be, there will be waves of emotion that come during the healing process. But, um, but it's just a very like tender emotional time at the very beginning. So once you get through that first step, then it's time to reflect and look at like, what, what could I have done differently? Or where did I abandon myself in the relationship and give myself away for my partner? Like that for me personally, that was a big one that I had to look at. And, and I had to heal a lot of codependency patterns after my breakups. So, or after one breakup in particular, I was like, whoa, we were so enmeshed. Like there was, there was no identity for either, either of us. Like it was just us. Um, mm -hmm. So that's the second one is to, is to reflect on lessons learned and to really, really get present to, to what you can get out of the, out of the breakup and learn from it. And then um, repairing your relationship with yourself is the third step. And I love that step so much because it's going to look different for everybody, but we, um, you know, we so often leave a relationship feeling like empty 
And so it's how can you fill yourself back up? What do you love? What do you want to do? What's your desire? And often those things change over time. So you get an opportunity to like get to know yourself again, to date yourself, to explore what you want and what you desire. It's such a fun piece of the process. Um, And then step four is letting go of what no longer serves you. So Mm. it's releasing, letting go, forgiving, which is a big one, forgiving yourself, forgiving your partner. Um, And and um, cleaning out your space, like like physically letting go of actual, you know, tangible items. Um, and then the final step is, uh, is moving forward. And that's where you start to date again, or you put yourself out there, or you like commit to yourself, like whatever that is for, for somebody to move forward. So those are the, the five steps of the, the process as I, as I see them. So can you mix up in what order they go? So can you throw the stuff out first before you do any of the other steps? Totally. To- 100%. A burn it's it. like it's like it's like create your own adventure in a breakup mm-hmm. essentially. So if you're like, "Oh, I'm so ready to just like have a bonfire and burn their, you know, the the gifts they gave me or the things that are still in my house, like go for it." You know, I really, I operate um, and I work with my clients on operating from a place of what feels good in the moment. So we, we come from our bodies in, in my work and trusting and listening to your body. And so throwing their stuff out might be resonant for you at the very beginning. And if that's resonant, go ahead and do it. And for some people, they need to like hold on to those things a little bit longer until they don't feel so much of an emotional attachment to them. And then they're ready to release them. So where in this does the rebound relationship happen? Because if that feels good in the moment, does it necessarily belong in on this journey? That's such a good question. So um, the rebound relationship is, is like just so... It's so fascinating to me just like thinking about it and, you know, why do we do that and what is it about? And I think it, um, it can come from a lot of different places and usually it's coming from a place of being uncomfortable being alone. So all of a sudden your world looks so different than it did before. Like everything's just turned upside down. Your schedule might be very different the, um, you know, your text messages, like you're not, you're not seeing the text messages from your partner come in anymore, your calls. And so you're seeking out connection and it makes sense because there's like an empty, it's like something has been emptied from our lives. And what we do as human beings is we want to fill up that space. So what are we going to fill that space up with? And I work with my clients on consciously filling up. So the rebound relationship tends to be like an unconscious reaction to being alone. And the, the real thing, like if we were to really dive into what's the actual desire underneath the rebound relationship, chances are it's a deep connection. And it's like, where can we find that deep connection that is not coming from a a relationship that's just going to be like a quickie and done. And then you're going to be left in the same spot that you were before. How can we actually use your, your desire for connection and, and move you forward on this path? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times it's like connecting deeply with yourself, you know, and finding your own source, you using yourself as a source of pleasure and a source of turn on, um, or connecting deeply when I work with women, connecting deeply with women, with other women and their sisters, I've found so much healing in my sisterhood, like going to women and being like, I'm not okay right now. Can you hold me? Can you physically hold me in your arms so I can cry? There is something so nourishing about that. Um, so there's, you know, the rebound relationship. I don't think there's any wrong way to do a breakup. Like if you are wanting a rebound and you're like, this is going to make me feel better. And you're aware that it's a rebound, you know, it, go for it. I'm, <laughs> I'm all about it. And then you can really, you can consciously move through that and say, oh God, I feel pretty bad after that. What, you know, where was it coming from? And you can do some, some excavation on looking at the rebound relationship. 
So you are a breakup coach. That means you spend your days helping someone through their breakup journey and through this highway. Typically, how long do you see that it takes for someone to heal from a breakup? Because that is probably the, one of the questions I get most. It's like my the top three questions is how long? How long until I start dating again? How long is it going to take to feel like less bad about this thing? Yeah. <laughs> Oh gosh, that's such a, it's such an individual answer. You know, everybody has a different timeline and um, I, I hesitate to say this because it's like, I don't want people to expect that this is the answer, but I generally say about 90 days for you to like really move through some stuff. And that is if and only if you commit to your growth and your healing. Like if you are, you know, still co connected with them and still um, like smelling their clothes and things like that. And, and you're still, you still have this attachment and you're, you're sitting in the attachment, it will take a little longer. And that's yeah. just the truth of it. But if you are really committed to like working on yourself and going to therapy or doing a 12 step program or getting a coach or, you know, going into some, some beautiful healing program with a coach, there's, um, it moves so much faster. And another thing that I've seen that accelerates the healing process, like if you are really committed to healing community, community yeah. is so, so big because you can see your story in other people's stories. Yeah. And usually there's someone who's a little bit ahead of you. So you can see the hope in what they're sharing in their story. And then you can be hope for somebody else. And I just think there's so much beautiful, beautiful transformation that can happen in community. I couldn't agree more. And I think that when someone's going through a divorce or breakup, usually the people in your immediate world don't get it. They haven't been there or it's so far in their past that they're not really understanding what it is that you're going through. And mm -hmm. you, we typically hesitate to share, to be vulnerable, to ask for the support, the hug, the cry out session. But when you have a community of people who are going through that same thing, it makes all of the difference in the world. So I agree a hundred percent with you. Yeah, totally. And I tell people, you know, your, your breakup best friends you probably haven't even met yet. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're somewhere else going through similar things and it, it might take, take a little bit of initiative on your side to seek that out, but that support, oh my gosh, it is huge. Now, do you think though, because it, this can be a slippery slope of going down the road of negativity in the blame game when you have someone else who is also going through it with you compared to supporting and uplifting and cheering each other on. I think that there is a distinction and I think that there can be this negative space that kind of keeps you stuck. Totally. It's, it's collusion. Yeah. It's like you're, you know, you're finding someone to validate your story and validate the, you know, um, the blaming, like you were saying, right. And, and that actually doesn't help. <laughs> yeah. It it really it really only um pulls you deeper into that like negative low vibration sort of attachment space. And when you're when you're working on coming out of the suffering of it, it's going to take a level of like consciously unattaching from your relationship and bringing people in who will not collude with you and will actually call you out on your collusion and say mm, something about this, like, you know, you're going into your, what, what mm -hmm. I say is like, you're going onto his side of the street. Yeah. So you have your side of the street and after a breakup, your only job is to like clean it up and make it look amazing and make it feel really good. Your job is not to like look over there and say, your side of the street sucks. Like you need to clean up. You need to do these things. No wonder you left or no wonder I left you, whatever. Um, <laughs> I've never really used that metaphor in that way before, but, uh, yeah, it's like when you, when you're starting to veer over to their side of the street, having someone who can call you out on that and be yeah. like, mm -mm, we're coming back over here. We're focusing on you. And that's, what's really powerful about having a coach, you know, is mm -hmm. like someone who can, who doesn't go on your ride with you.
Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, so I think that what I'm hearing you say is that if you kind of slam the door on that relationship, it's over, um, you heal quicker than when you keep it open a crack. And we see this over and over again in the divorce space is that someone decides to file and that's it, but then they're, they're following their ex on social media or they get back together to have sex or um, there's conversations of maybe we'll get back together. You know, there's always like this, this little sliver of a doorway open that keeps them coming back and keeps them stuck in that. So is your recommendation that like we slam the door, bolt it, lock it, like nail the damn thing shut in order to move forward? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, I know it's so hard. It is, it is one of the hardest things to do is to like totally close to them. Yeah. And like, this is, this is the path of the beginning of the path of acknowledging and honoring your own sovereignty and your own power. Mm. So it will take a level of discomfort <laughs> to block them to um I had I had an ex that I had like blocked on everything and then he liked a payment that I had on Venmo. And I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot about Venmo. You know, there's just so many places that we can like let them leak in. And um, so then I blocked him on Venmo. And and uh, so it's, it, you know, it's a little bit of a process and a, um, yeah. But having support around that part too is very, very helpful to have someone who's like backing you on the, the no contact because it's really I Important. I didn't even know that you could, you could like something on Venmo. So who do? <laughs> oh my gosh. It was, it was crazy. Cause I had gone out with a guy and like, we exchanged a Venmo transact. Like, I think, I think like I paid him for half or whatever. And, um, yeah, my ex saw it and liked it. And then, um, sent a message and was like, you know, he's ugly or something <gasps> like there was some oh kind gosh. of thing. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, we're going to, Nope. No more Venmo. Yeah. All right. So it's Saturday night. You're a month into your breakup and you are lonely as hell. And the urge is there. Maybe you have a glass of wine. The urge is there to text your ex or any one of the exes from the past, just to have that connection. What do you do? What do you do when you're lonely? <sighs> so, um, I have a, I have a practice for my clients to and that is a list of, did I cut out? Are we good? No, you're good. Okay. Okay. Um, I have a practice for my clients to make a pleasure menu and it's a list of things that bring you pleasure. Mm -hmm. So anytime it's like you, you, you're building out your own toolbox, right? And so anytime you're like in that place, that down, you look at your pleasure menu and you say, okay, what is something I can give myself so that I can come back into my body, into my pleasure, know that like I got me, right? So if it's reaching out to a girlfriend or um, having a bubble bath or like going to the beach and laying on the sand, whatever the, the like things are that really bring you pleasure, I have my clients like go back to that, that pleasure menu. And um, so that's just one example, but there's so many tools you can put in your toolbox. For me, um, there was, there was one particular night where I, um, I had been texting back and forth with this guy. We weren't, this wasn't like a breakup story, but we weren't um, officially dating. We had never met and we were supposed to go out that night and hadn't heard from him all day. I texted him to check in, still didn't hear anything from him. And I'm starting to get ready for the date. I was like, it was maybe five o'clock. Um, and then by like six 30, I hadn't heard anything. So I was like, okay, I could stay in and be sad and be resentful and hate all men and delete my apps and go, go that direction. Or I can come back to my pleasure. And I was like, okay, what do I want to do tonight? So I, I got real dressed up, like extra dressed up than I would have with like really hot heels. And I walked down the street to the restaurant that we were supposed to meet at for sushi. And as I'm walking, I passed a steakhouse and I was like, you know, I don't want sushi. I want steak. And so I like, I, I just in that moment was really in my desire and in my pleasure. And so I took myself out. I went mm -hmm. and like sat at the window and had a glass of wine and had a beautiful meal and flirted with the waiter. And it felt 
amazing. Mm. So it's like, where can you fill yourself up and not rely on your ex or yeah. another partner, like another a rebound to do that for you? I, I love that story so much because I say over and over again, that one of the things that you should start, you should do is take yourself on a date and go to the nice restaurant and order the good champagne. It's an entirely different experience when you're there alone and like put your phone down. So you're not caught up in it and just sit there. It is so liberating. It is exciting. It's fun. Oh, it's like, it's amazing. I think that anyone who's going through a breakup, a divorce should do that and then bring yourself on vacation. I think that's another, you know, oh, another my good God. one too. Don't get me started on like post breakup travel. That mm -hmm. is my favorite thing in the world to just be with myself <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and travel the world. Yeah. That's awesome. I love it. So Paige, you are amazing. Um, you're a breakup coach. Can you just explain what a breakup coach does? Yeah, totally. So I help people move through their heartbreak. Um, and I do that through one-on-one -on -one coaching packages. And I also have an incredible online um, breakup support community for people who are going through a breakup. Like I said, community is, is one of my biggest values. So um, yeah, I, I lead a breakup support community and I do workshops monthly and all kinds of virtual events and things like that. But um, the whole, my whole purpose is to allow people to be in the emotions of the breakup, like giving people full approval for every, anywhere they're at in the breakup process and seeing their potential and seeing their power and holding them to mm. that standard so that they can start to believe in themselves again and rebuild their lives after breakups. Oh, that's so beautiful. And I, you know, having a coach guiding you, cheering you on, supporting you is something that you don't think you need until you need it and actually have one. And then you're like, how could I ever live without one? Um, I've gone down the coaching world of having business coaches and branding coaches and and it's a game changer because when you have someone who's holding you accountable, calling you out on both your bullshit and your brilliance, um, mm -hmm. and, you know, and really making you show up for yourself, like that is a life changer. So that yeah. is an, the best investment anyone can make is in themselves. I love that so much. Um, you also have awesome and super funny social media posts. Um, <laughs> they're awesome. They're totally clever and creative and I have envy, but you do such a good job. So where can, uh, my listeners find you so that they can follow you? Yeah. My Instagram is breakup breakthrough. That's my handle. And you can find me on my website also at breakupbreakthrough.com. Awesome. Okay. So final question, what are your top tips to get over a breakup? Ah. Uh, Every time I feel like it's different. So let me just feel like what's resonant right now. Mm -hmm. um, definitely feel your feelings. Uh, let yourself like be in your mess. Let yourself be messy. Mm. Get yourself some community support. Mm. There is, there are so many resources out there. So take some initiative, look, look up, you know, whatever works for you and, and get some support so that you have people backing you on this path. Oh, such good advice. You guys, you all have to be following Paige. She is a beautiful soul and human and is just serving the world with her heart. So, and just a side note, if you're listening to this, you won't know, but if you're watching the video, we both have these like mega size heart earrings on, which are totally funny that we showed up to a podcast interview about heartbreak, like with big old hearts hanging from our ears. So <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't want it any way else. This is, this is so fun. And our headbands. And our headbands too, matching headbands. So, so funny. Paige, thank you. I'm so excited to chat with you. And um, I, I just adore you. Thank you so much for spending the time with me. Thank you. I'm so, so grateful. I appreciate you.